Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is the Sleeping Beauty Paradox. Now, the Sleeping Beauty Paradox is a paradox for probability. Specifically, it's a paradox about the probability of an event as opposed to the probability you should assign that event based on your situation. These may seem like they should be the same thing, but as the paradox will show, maybe not. Let's take a look. The paradox goes like this. Imagine that you are a sleeping beauty. You will sleep until someone wakes you up. However, your prince, he's a bit strange. He's going to flip a coin after you go to sleep. If it's heads, he will wake you up on Monday and ask you to guess how the coin landed. But if it's tails, he will wake you up on Monday ask you to guess how the coin landed, then give you sleeping pills that make you forget this interaction, and then we'll wake you up again on Tuesday and ask you the same question. You know all this information ahead of time, but you don't know how the coin landed. So once again, if it lands heads, he's just going to wake you up on Monday and ask you how the coin landed. If it lands tails, he's going to wake you up twice, once on Monday, ask you how you think the coin landed, give you some sleeping pills, wake you up again on Tuesday, and ask you the same question. When you wake up, you don't know if it's Monday or Tuesday, and you don't know if the coin landed heads or tails. You have to guess that. Now, the question for you, other than how to find a less strange prince, is what probability should you assign to the likelihood of the coin landing heads or tails when the prince asks you? At first glance, you might say 50-50, because this strange waking procedure has not actually changed the underlying probability of the event. It hasn't made the coin more or less likely to land on heads or tails just because you're being woken up at certain times. It seems that we should assign a 50-50 probability to the chance of the coin landing on heads or tails. When you wake up, you're not given any additional information about the coin that you did not know before it was flipped. You don't know what day it is, and so you don't have any additional information. There's no reason for you to change your assessment of the probability that the flipping of the coin is 50-50. You don't know if it's the first or second time you've been awoken. You don't know if it's Monday or Tuesday. You don't actually have any more information than you did when you went to sleep. You would have assigned the coin a 50-50 chance if it was flipped before you went to sleep, so you should give it a 50-50 chance when you wake up, with no more information than you had when you went to sleep. Right? Well, maybe not. However, this isn't the only possible response. Some philosophers have argued that you should in fact assign a two-thirds probability to the coin landing tails, because if the experiment were to be, to, re to be repeated over and over again, you would expect to be awoken twice as often for tails as for heads. Therefore, you should guess that Two out of the three times you will be awoken, the coin will be tails. This argument claims that there are three situations in which you'll be awoken. Heads on Monday, tails on Monday, and tails on Tuesday. When you wake, you don't know which of those three situations you're in. And two of those situations have involved the coin landing on a tails. And so you should assign a two-thirds probability to the coin being tails. There are several alternative versions of this paradox that may elicit varying intuitions, such as the Rip Van Winkle version, where someone is woken up on 999 successive days, forgetting each time on a tails and only once on a heads. It seems strange to say that you would assign a probability of only one in a thousand to a heads, but also seems like you would lose a lot of money if you bet on a heads every time you woke up, because odds are you'd be... If you do this over and over again, you're going to be waking up many more days for a tails than for a heads. Another version, called Snake Eyes Sleeping Beauty, rolls a dice instead of flipping a coin, waking you up for six days in a row, forgetting each time on a one, and only waking you up on Monday for all the other numbers. Again, it seems strange to assign a higher probability to a one on a dice than to the other values, just because you would wake up on a one more often. But also unlikely for anyone to bet on a number other than one, since that will lose the money in the long term. And so it seems like the probability of the actual event and the probability you should assign it if you're betting are different. 
Now, why is this a problem? Well, it's a problem for Bayes, and it's a problem for Bayesian epistemology, because this has ramifications for two central tenets of Bayesian epistemology, both in terms of how you change your beliefs when given new information, and how we define degrees of belief based on how you would bet on an outcome. One of these principles, how you change belief, points in one direction, while the other, basing your degree of belief on how you would bet, points in the other direction. The argument from changing belief offered by David Lewis claims your initial probabilities should be 50-50 because you have not gained any new information when you wake up. However, if you were to learn that the day is Monday and not Tuesday, you should increase your belief in heads to greater than one half. Under Lewis's formation, there's a 50-50 chance of the coin being heads, and if the coin is tails, there's a 50-50 chance of it being Monday. Therefore, if you learn that it's Monday, it eliminates the 25% chance that it's Tuesday, meaning if you learn it's Monday, you should assign a two-thirds chance to the coin being heads. In other words, the initial probability of heads on a Monday, 50%, divided by the probability of it being Monday, 0.75. This relies on Bayes' theorem, which describes how you should reassess the chances of one event given another event. So check out our series on Bayesian epistemology for more. I'm not going to dig too much into the math here. Um, check out that series, and it'll explain why you should be dividing the 50 by the 0.75 to get your new probability. But for now, understand that that's how the Bayes', Bayes theorem should tell you to change your probability assessment, and also for your degree of belief in the result, and also the fact that you shouldn't be changing your degree of belief absent some event or some new information being gained. However, the proponents of the claim that you should assign a two-thirds chance to tails, such as Adam Elga, also think that you should reassess your probabilities if you're given the information that it's a Monday. Specifically, they claim that you should now think that the chances are 50-50 once you're told that it's a Monday. Once again, this uses Bayes' theorem, just with different initial probabilities. This view takes the three wakings as equally likely, so they divide the initial probability of it being heads on and Monday, one-third, by the chances of it being Monday, two-thirds, giving you a half, or 50%. This view also uses Bayes' theorem, but struggles to explain why you should reassess your initial probabilities of heads and tails being equally likely upon learning that you'll be awoken for heads once for heads and twice for tails. It seems that the chances of the coin should not change based on how often you're awoken. These seem like importantly independent events. However, Elga argues for this initial assignment of two-thirds to tails by referring to another principle of Bayesian epistemology, the Dutch book argument. Check out our video on Dutch book arguments for more, but basically this claims that your degrees of belief should be defined as to whether you would be willing to take a bet with a given payout. Subject S has a degree of belief X in proposition P, where X is a number between 0 and 1 inclusive, with 1 as a certainty in P and 0 as a certainty in not P, if and only if S is willing to accept buying a wager that pays $1 for X dollars, i.e. X is paying out X dollars for a $1 payout, and would sell such a wager for X dollars and more. In other words, if you have a degree of belief of 1, i.e. you're certain an event is going to happen, you would be willing to accept a wager that just pays back $1 by paying out $1. If you have a degree of belief of 50-50, you'd be willing to pay out 50 cents for a wager that would pay out $1 half of the time. Check out our video on Dutch book arguments for more on this principle and why it is useful in complicated contexts of reassessing degrees of belief. Based on this, if you thought that there was a 50% chance of the coin being heads, you should be willing to pay 50 cents on a bet that would win you a dollar every time you wake. However, no one would take that bet, since they would lose money on it if the coin was tails. To break even, you need to bet one-third, or 33 cents, on heads, and 66 cents on tails. If this definition of degrees of belief is correct, we must agree with Elga that it is more likely that the coin will be tails when you wake up, because you wake up more often for a tails. Now, a third response to this paradox is to argue that this shows that the very idea of Bayesian epistemology is problematic. In fact, this paradox shows that two of the central components of Bayesian epistemology are at odds with each other. You don't gain any information about the coin by learning that you will be awoken at certain times, but one solution to the paradox says you should adjust your degree of belief regardless. The other solution says that you should put yourself in a situation where your degree of belief would lose you money, invalidating the Dutch book argument. Either solution seems problematic for the Bayesian. 
As a skeptic, I'm worried about the very idea of degrees of belief, so this is where I likely fall, skeptical of the very project. Check out all of my objections to Bayesian epistemology. We have a whole separate series on objections to Bayesian epistemology for more reasons you might be skeptical of the idea of degrees of belief. A big thank you to Joao Sa for supporting Carnades.org on Patreon since 2017. You too can support the channel and get access to Patreon exclusive posts for just $2 a month, less than the price of buying me a giant cookie once a month. If you want to support public philosophy, please, please, please do consider donating. What do you think? What would you do if you woke up and someone asked you to guess if a coin was heads or tails? Other than asking them, why are they waking you up to ask probability questions? How would you reassess if it was Monday? Beyond being more likely to hit your snooze button. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you like this video and you want to see more. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.